Okay, hello everyone, I'm Andrew Trepin and today we are talking about GIG system and uh, two very important parts of it, uh, GIG services or system services and Shepherd. I assume that you have some basic knowledge, uh, at least about GNU store, uh, about profiles and about what init system is. Uh, the last one is applicable to uh, any kind of Linux distribution. Almost all of them have uh, some init system. Uh, let's talk a little about updates. Uh, I created a mailing list uh, where you can post your questions or some ideas. And uh, as you can see, I have a small update in my setup stream. I switched to Valent, have new hardware and uh, switched to new operating system. It somehow works, but uh, testing the stream a uh, few minutes before starting I found that there are some uh, radio sound uh, inside uh, my audio track. I don't know where it comes from, but hope it don't disturb you too much. Uh, okay, let's go to the topic. And uh, I would say that uh, Geek's system has two important uh, parts that we can split. Uh, to runtime and build time parts. And respo responsible for runtime part is Shepherd. It's uh, pre previously known as Daemon Manager Daemon, uh, and now it's Daemon Shepherd, uh, which cares about uh, some processes, long running or uh, runt uh, ones. And uh, it's a first process which will be started uh, in your system and it will boot or all other uh, necessary processes in your operating system. And uh, you have heard uh, comments that you can issue and get a list of all services. I already uh, run it previously, but you can see all the services that currently run in my system. Uh, it's very important to understand that it's Shepherd services. Uh, in most cases, it's some diamonds that are just a long living process, uh, which should be uh, somehow executed and monitored uh, to make administrator or user uh, be able to restart such uh, processes. And uh, that's mostly all that uh, Shepherd do. It just starts some processes and uh, can manage them. Also, it can build a dependency graph. Uh, for example, if uh, I type uh, sudo heard uh, doc uh, ntp d, uh, it will say the documentation. And if I issue a status command or on NTPD uh, daemon, uh, it will say the current status and uh, what the service provides and uh, what this service, service requires. And as you can see, uh, requires uh, make uh, those services uh, somehow uh, connected. And uh, using uh, some command, uh, you can build uh, a graph uh, directed uh, acyclic graph, uh, which uh, shows all the dependencies b between all the services. As you can see that, uh, oh, it's pretty w small, I suppose. I can slightly increase the font and you can see that, uh, for example, uh, smart card di diamond uh, requires a syslog diamond uh, to be able to probably log uh, some events and uh, NTPD uh, diamond that we uh, saw uh, earlier uh, requires networking uh, 
uh, to be present and user processes to be present. Uh, it's obviously that network daemon can't operate without network. Uh, and this dependency graph uh, shows uh, dependency between uh, process in runtime. That means uh, that uh, using heart command you can operate uh, in real time and modify those services. But better not to do it. It's better to uh, declare all those dependencies in your config file and just update the system. Uh, hi, Jiu Jingu. Uh, does this graph represent the services that are currently running? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, actually, uh, Tricky question. Okay, uh, th this graph uh, probably built uh, using configuration file, but my current system has uh, exactly the same uh, state of all the services. Probably, uh, probably. I used Geeks system uh, shepherd uh, graph, I suppose. Uh, yeah, uh, it builds uh, this graph based not on uh, current uh, uh, state, but on, based on configuration. But my configuration is uh, the same as uh, my current state of the system. It's possible to build a similar graph, uh, but I'm not sure that some comment exists for it. Maybe you will need to implement it yourself. Maybe it's uh, possible using some heard sub, sub comment. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, uh, very useful for me, but probably it's a, some useful feature. Uh, maybe someone already implemented it, maybe uh, not, but it's not hard to implement such feature. But thank you for your question. Uh, about Shepherd and its uh, diamonds, uh, all those comments that uh, was issued, uh, I wrote them in the file, which I will share later, probably. Uh, this one for getting the st current status uh, of all services, and this one for generating the graph you saw. Uh, and another interesting uh, property of Shepherd, uh, you can launch it as uh, init process, which will run uh, the rest of your system, but also you can run uh, it in your uh, user space. That means you will have uh, two Shepherds one uh, system-wide and one for your uh, exact user. And that means you can uh, declare and uh, configure your own uh, user services. For example, GPG uh, agent or maybe Emacs daemon, uh, all uh, such services can be configured uh, and run by Shepherd, but uh, it won't be uh, system-wide. Uh, services, but your user services. And uh, it's pretty cool. You don't need uh, pseudo writes and uh, other stuff. You just uh, run Shepherd process, uh, write small configuration for it, and you're ready to go. And that's all about Shepherd. It has a documentation. It's uh, okay uh, not great, but uh, you can understand how uh, Shepherd works. And also, uh, you can find a blog post, uh, Geeks Shepherd uh, User Services. If you're interested more about uh, configuring Shepherd for your own user, and you can find the examples of how you can uh, instantiate your own user Shepherd services. Uh, I will place this, this, that link uh, somewhere at the end. Oop. And now let's go to next topic. Uh, the next topic is uh, a system service. Uh, actually, service is a primary Geeks concept. Oh, and another question from Jin. Uh, can user level Shepherd be launched prior to login? It's a cool question. Uh, recently, we discussed in IRC with uh, Ludovic and uh, Leo uh, such capability. Uh, actually, in most cases, Shepherd should be run uh, during login. Uh, for now, it's possible to do it uh, using your uh, profile or maybe bash RC uh, or s some other uh, 
shell related uh, configurations uh, a proper way to launch uh, user level shepherd uh, is probably using pam a pluggable authentication model uh, but there is no implementation for that yet and another uh, option is to run shepherd before login uh, it's called lingering uh, shepherd uh, there is no uh, implementation for it but it doesn't seem uh, pretty hard to do it uh, i already drafted the implementation maybe i will uh, show it even today uh, but a little later when we will be working with services uh, and uh, it's possible but maybe not desirable because uh, in most cases user at least logins one on the system after boot uh, but yeah uh, it's it's a good question and a good idea okay uh, going back to services system services it's a very different thing from shepherd services uh, and it's a little confusing that they have the same name uh, but system services is different from shepherd services and it's uh, important to understand actually uh, system service is a small building block and your operating system is just uh, a list of such building blocks uh, and they also can be uh, connected somehow uh, between each other using uh, extensions and uh, i will show it uh, almost uh, in a few seconds uh, how you can declare service how they uh, connected to each other uh, but uh, to understand what operating system is uh, it's actually a record uh, which contains uh, a list of services that will be instantiated uh, or evaluated uh, in your resulting operating system um, to be more precise uh, as you know uh, geeks and nicks are purely functional package managers but they are not exactly purely functional uh, because it won't be possible to do some side effects even if you saw that uh, writing to store is not a side effect uh, which we can uh, say uh, but creating and switching to new operating system creating boot records and other stuff is obviously a side effect and those side effects won't be possible in purely functional language and uh, in uh, Nixos it's done using Nixos models in Geeks it's it done uh, using services there are few services which can produce some side effects uh, but to be uh, more exact there are few services that uh, can uh, produce some g expressions that will be launched later uh, by uh, by a user uh, maybe directly maybe indirectly using uh, some wrapper uh, around it but uh, those services provide uh, some scripts which will do some dirty work and uh, will create some side effects okay uh, let's uh, go and do some practice uh, let's open the documentation and uh, let's see at the graph here it's a simplified version of uh, how your operating system looks uh, it uh, can consist of few services uh, and uh, services can extend uh, services and it will be mentioned with uh, such arrow for example e, e login d uh, extends uh, pam extends polkit extends dbus and extends udf uh, shepherd extends boot and uh, for example accounts extends etc and let's uh, try to understand why such uh, connection exists account uh, accounts uh, service actually uh, just creates some users and groups inside your operating system uh, by the end of the day it's a just a file uh, in your store which contains uh, information about uh, users and 
uh, groups available on your system. But uh, to be this file present in your file uh, system, uh, I mean in your root file system, uh, for example, slash etc slash uh, users, uh, it should produce some side effect. But uh, accounts itself can't produce such side effect, but it can say to etc service that uh, it uh, wants to uh, users file exist uh, in etc directory. Uh, and obviously uh, etc also can't produce uh, such a file and it says uh, activation service, uh, please add uh, some side effect uh, to the activation script, which will, uh, when evaluated, produce a real file uh, or at least some link to the store uh, in etc directory. And activation script says, um, please add uh, activation phase to our boot script. And uh, after that, uh, at your resulting uh, system item in the store, uh, you will find a boot script which uh, contains uh, a line which executes uh, activation script and after that execute a shepherd process. Uh, why activation script should be a prior shepherd process is because um, to boot a system you actually need only your store and uh, boot um, partition uh, which will contain your kernel and bootloader uh, and uh, after that uh, boot script will activate your system uh, which uh, will make all uh, the packages, all the binaries, all the configuration available in your root file system. And after that, we'll launch Shepard. That is why uh, they both extends boot uh, service and activation script will uh, be uh, earlier uh, in this boot script than executing of the Shepard. Uh, okay, uh, I will show you uh, how it looks. Um, you all have run a current system uh, directory, which contain few, oh, I need to go to it, run current system, uh, which contains few different files. And one of them, as you can see, boot file. And if you take a look uh, at the content of the boot file, you will see there uh, some stuff here. Uh, which actually ensure, ensures uh, that uh, some uh, files are deleted, some files are created, uh, and everything is ready to run. And at the end of this file, you will see that Shepard process will be executed with configuration uh, like this. But if we take a look uh, a little earlier, we probably will see a call to activation script. It's a little, a little pity that uh, everything is in one line and it's a little hard to find something here. Uh, I don't know how I can easily uh, pretty print it, but uh, it should be somewhere here. Uh, we, we can, oh, I found it right here. Uh, the activation script is right here and uh, we will see uh, how this activation script constructed. Uh, yep, uh, you're right, Jin. Uh, both uh, Geeks and Shepherd uh, completely in uh, written in a scheme, uh, which is a dialect of Lisp, uh, which is pretty cool and uh, gives you a lot of power uh, to express what you need. And uh, folks from uh, Geek's development team utilize this power in the right way, I think. Um, and it's cool that you can declare a service in the same language as you define your operating system. And also your build scripts is also uh, written in the same language. Uh, that means your package definitions uh, doesn't uh, require a knowledge of bash and uh, Packages also um, build it using uh, G expressions, which is basically a scheme uh, 
uh, to be exact, it's a guile uh, dialect of scheme. Okay, uh, here uh, we saw that the boot script contains some cleanup. Uh, after that, activation script executed, and after that, uh, our sh Shepherd process uh, launched. And after that, uh, Shepherd will launch the rest of the system. And we can take a look at Shepherd configuration, and you can see it contains a lot of stuff. I don't uh, want to dig uh, into it, but it basically uh, launches all the uh, compiled uh, version of uh, service configurations, which are written in scheme. Mm, but let's uh, look how this configuration is generated. Uh, what uh, we've saw right now uh, can be uh, summed up and uh, we can discuss how the whole process of reconfiguration of operating system happens. Uh, at the beginning, you have uh, definition of your operating system. For example, something like that uh, operating system, which declares some fields of the operating system record. Uh, locale, hostname, blah, 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 keyboard, blah, blah, blah. And at the end, uh, it contains services, which uh, contains list of all services. Here you see that I append to desktop services list uh, a list of my uh, own services. That means that this list can be pretty huge because desktop services contains a lot of services. And uh, if we take a look at uh, all the services in my system, uh, we will see such picture. Uh, all those services declared by me or by desktop services variable. And uh, the uh, arrow means that a service extends another service. For example, etc extends activate and it also uh, extends system. Clean up uh, extends boot and that is why we saw uh, some values at the beginning of the boot script, which actually clean up the system. And activate also extends the boot service. Um, and Shepherd also should extend the boot. And we see here Shepherd root service extends the boot. And let's look at how it uh, written in the Lisp. For that, we will open uh, not system, let's open services uh, file. And inside the services file, uh, we can see the, the definition of service type, which basically record uh, that contains few fields. Uh, but most important fields is extensions, compose and extend. If you take a look at uh, documentation, just right here, you can see the example of uh, service definition, uh, of service type definition, uh, sorry. Service type definition says uh, what name of the service type, uh, what extensions exist, and what default value of uh, this service. But, uh, it, it can have uh, a little more fields, but uh, let's first understand what extensions uh, field contains. It contains list of extensions and each extension is instance of service extension record, which contains uh, two arguments. First argument is a service, service type that will be extended by this service type. And uh, the second argument is the function which accepts a value of this service and uh, using this value it returns another value which will be passed to this uh, service 
extension function. And uh, to understand how extension function could look like, uh, we can go here and look at activation script, for example. Activation. Activation service type. It's uh, how activation service type looks. It has a list of extensions and only extension which uh, do activation script is uh, extending boot service type. And uh, it's just provides all the uh, G expressions passed to activation service type uh, to the boot service type. That mean uh, that activation service on its own doesn't do anything, but uh, other services which extends activation service uh, and provides some G expressions that should be lo launched before uh, Shepherd started. They will be bi bi bypassed to boot uh, service, uh, and those G expression will will end up uh, in uh, some files that will be referenced by boot script. And uh, here compose uh, and e extend uh, functions. I mean fields, uh, contains the functions that will be used uh, during the extension of activation service. A lot of extensions, <laughs> I suppose. But let's take a look uh, uh, at function gxp uh, arrow activation gxp. Um, Actually, I, I would like to uh, look at uh, activation script function, uh, which will be called uh, from uh, this G expression. Uh, G expression is uh, some list po code uh, that will be evaluated uh, during uh, a different phase. Uh, I mean that it uh, the evaluation of such code is postponed and uh, this evaluation will happen uh, somewhere later. Uh, and this uh, means on, on GXP, uh, that means that uh, this code will be evaluated uh, during compile time or during evaluation of this code. And activation script is basically creates uh, activation service file for each G expression provided to activation service. That means that every service that extended activation uh, service and provided its own G expression uh, will have its own activation service SCM file uh, somewhere in the store. And our activation service uh, will create activate SCM uh, file which will contain uh, some uh, preparation and all uh, those files will be evaluated using primitive load. All those files, I mean all the activation, uh, activate service SCM files created earlier here. And let's take a look at uh, how uh, our activation script looks. Uh, let's cut our boot script. Let's find activate SCM file here. And it should contain a lot of primitive loads, some uh, preparation and a lot of primitive loads, which uh, will just load uh, all other activation scripts. And as you can see here, uh, some preparations here. And after that, you can see a lot of activate service scripts, which will activate some services. And we can take a look at the values of those files. And for example, right here, we see something related to no login. Uh, I hope you can see anything in, in this mess of uh, parentheses. But we can take a look at another activate 
service and uh, we'll find uh, PCSC uh, diamond uh, We just create some uh, symlinks and varlib pcsc will be just a symlink to uh, GNU store item, which is uh, probably required by pcsc daemon. Uh, cool. That means that all side effects will happen at uh, this stage when activation uh, script called and all other activation uh, service uh, subscripts uh, also will be uh, evaluated. Cool. Uh, now we saw uh, that many people, as you can see, a lot of them, a lot of uh, extensions, arrows, points to activate. Uh, a lot of people uh, have some side effects using this activation script, which will be launched by our CLI probably, or during boot by uh, our bootloader. Cool. Let's uh, take it another, uh, let's take a look at another example. Uh, for example, how someone extends Shepherd. For example, account. Uh, let's see if account service type exists here. Uh, probably we need something like sh shadow GNU services shadow. Uh, okay, uh, the question is uh, what's the relationship between activate and uh, those that have side effects? Uh, some services or some programs uh, in your system, some parts of your system uh, want uh, to some event happen and this event produce side effect. For example, if we go to etc directory, uh, we will see that there are a lot of files here. Uh, and those files uh, should somehow uh, appear in this etc directory. Uh, for example, pamd or uh, for example pulse uh, directory. Let's go to pulse directory and uh, two files default uh, pa and system pl pa, and those configuration uh, contains configuration uh, of pulse audio. Uh, but there is no possibility to do side effect in Geeks Package Manager, which will uh, do something outside of the store. It's not possible to create uh, etc directory, uh, to create pulse directory and uh, put those symlinks. They are symlinks as you can uh, see here. Uh, and it necessary to provide some ability to make such side effects as creating symlinks. And uh, the only way to do it uh, in Geeks system is using Geeks services. And uh, all those Geeks services actually doesn't provide uh, side effects on its own because it will be a mess, uh, but they provide a file uh, called activation script, which uh, when called will do all those side effects, will create all symlinks and uh, other stuff. And this activation script will be called during the boot process or during reconfiguration process when we activate new system. And that means that we conducted all the side effects from all the services that should be run at some time, at some point of time. And we say it to uh, activate service that we want to uh, make the side effect happen uh, during activation of our operating system. And activation service creates all the scripts uh, that do all the side effects and say it to the boot service, please launch all those scripts during activation, during uh, system boot. 
and uh, that's how side effects happens. I hope uh, it was a clear explanation, but if not, uh, you can ask one more time or you can ask more additional questions. Okay. Going back to uh, yes, almost correct. Maybe uh, it's not uh, one hundred percent correct, but very close to uh, to the truth. Maybe there are, there are some options, uh, but in most cases, yes, uh, your whole operating system produces side effects only using this activation script. By operating system, I mean uh, operating system record, which is entity, Geeks entity, uh, which you declare in your uh, configuration, not the real operating system, which runs on your computer. Yep, you are welcome. Uh, simplified OS re reconfiguration process consists of few steps. You declare your operating system record and declare all the services and uh, relationship between them using uh, extension mechanism and uh, the reconfigure, reconfigure command uh, call fault services uh, function which extend uh, services. Uh, that means it uh, look for all the extensions of uh, exact service uh, and uh, gather all those extensions and uh, after that uh, it instance instantiate if uh, some services was extended by another services, but not instantiated on its own. And uh, after that, having all those, uh, th the big list of services, uh, the new system generated, the system uh, you saw here, it's like slash run current system. Uh, actually, it's just an item in your uh, GNU store, which contains uh, all necessary stuff, kernel, uh, some configuration, some activation scripts, profile, which con contains all uh, programs that should be available system-wide. And uh, after that, uh, using uh, scripts like activation script and switch script, uh, you get your operating system uh, sim linked or all, all that stuff uh, uh, declared in activation script will be uh, executed and all necessary sim links will be created. Uh, for example, uh, sim links in etc directory uh, and so on. Uh, some folders will be erased, some fold folders will be moved, but uh, overall you will get the system, uh, the complete system, uh, and all sim links to all necessary store items. Uh, and after that, a special script uh, will calculate the difference between uh, Shepherd services, it's a different type of services defined by Shepherd, and uh, your current state of the services. Uh, and uh, if it necessary, it will stop uh, already removed from configuration services. Uh, it will uh, launch uh, newly added services and will restart uh, services that was updated uh, inside your system configuration. And after that, it will install bootloader. Actually, uh, you already see uh, two more side effects here. First one is restarting Shepherd. Uh, s some uh, of the Shepherd services and installing uh, a bootloader. Uh, okay, that's how uh, the reconfiguration process look like uh, in not very detailed de detailed way, but uh, it's enough to understand uh, the whole process. The details can be found in Geek's source code. Uh, I had something here related to practice. Oh, okay. L let's take uh, 
Uh, let's talk a little more about services, service type and service configuration, and also relationship between services and shepherd services. Uh, to show this relationship, uh, I wanted to take uh, services shadow. No, no shadow. Okay. Uh, let's go up. Let's go up and let's grab for account service grab grab account service type minus R and somewhere here. Yeah, probably here. Uh, we can find a definition of account service type, uh, which contains few extensions. First of all, uh, account service type extends activation script, uh, which will probably symlink some files. And also it extends a shepherd root service, which is more interesting uh, because uh, looking at the implementation, uh, we can understand how system services are related to shepherd services. Here, uh, account uh, shepherd service function accepts uh, all accounts and groups uh, and it defines a variable accounts which is just uh, basically a list of accounts uh, and after that it creates a list which contains shepherd service and this shepherd service uh, requires file systems to be launched and provision user homes and it's one shot service. And if you take at uh, sudo heard status, take a look at this command, we will see that there are one shot services. One shot services is a service which will be launched only once and uh, after it stopped, it won't be restarted. Uh, it has user homes and we can take a look at the status of this service. Uh, it stopped one shot uh, provides user homes requires file systems uh, okay cool that's mean that uh, right here uh, we see that our account service type extends shepherd root service with a new shepherd service and in this case it's a shepherd service not a uh, not a system service uh, and this uh, code will be evaluated by Shepherd, uh, not by your rec rec uh, not your Guile interpreter, which evaluates your reconfigure command. And here uh, there are a function which uh, do something, and it's not very important. Uh, very important what uh, the implementation of such uh, function. Uh, it's just a very good example of how. Uh, Shepherd services are related to system services. That means that some Shepherd services are declared by uh, system services, but not all system services uh, has a related Shepherd service. And uh, it's I think uh, very important uh, idea that you have to understand. Uh, I am a little upset there are some confusion uh, in uh, the terms exist, but uh, at least it works and works relatively good uh, and hope people will get their head, uh, heads around uh, such terminology and won't be uh, confusing those two type of services, which a little different and shepherd services is related to runtime and your system services is related to build time when you're building operating system uh, it's built from system services when you launch your operating system and it operates it operates on shepherd services it's i think a, a good explanation uh, of the difference there are some possibilities uh, of how you can update uh, a list of already existing services is just a uh, 
syntax sugar. Uh, you provide a list of service, uh, services that you want to update, and you provide a service type that you want uh, to to, fa f f uh, to find uh, in this list. Uh, actually, uh, this list can contain few services of this service type. For example, if you take uh, a look at our extension graph of my operating system, you, you will see the few instances of Mingeti service. Uh, one instance per one TTI, uh, and I have six of them. Uh, that means that if you use uh, this, uh, oops, this modify services uh, function and uh, you provide a service type here, it uh, will match all those services. And uh, actually, uh, inside this pattern matching, uh, it will be one argument is config or the value of this service. And uh, you can uh, operate uh, on this value uh, as you wish and return an another value. For example, here, uh, what is done? Oh, in, for, for example, Mingeti, uh, as it was on the extension graph. Uh, you, cre you can create a new Mingeti configuration, inherit uh, configuration uh, that was previously, and just update one field inside it. And you will get six new services instead of six old services, which uh, contains this field updated. Uh, the d documentation is pretty uh, good uh, here, uh, and uh, I put the link uh, inside the text file uh, I will post later and you can find all that stuff in the li links section. Uh, but before we end, let's take, uh, let's talk about uh, what can be done with uh, such approach. Uh, I think many things can be done with such approach, but uh, the, the one I, I'm interested in currently is uh, how you can manage your uh, dot files or configuration for your user space programs. Uh, I came up with three ideas uh, how uh, this approach can be applied. Uh, the one is already implemented by uh, Geeks Home Manager. Uh, it's slightly modified. Uh, the after of Geeks Home Manager slightly modified this approach uh, in terms of extension mechanism. But the idea is very the same. You define one entity operating system in a uh, case of uh, your system configuration. And for example, home uh, entity uh, in case of your user space programs configuration. And inside uh, those uh, entity, you declare some services which can extend each other and which can produce some side effects. After that, you evaluate uh, this uh, home configuration and it produce uh, all necessary stuff inside your store and also simulink the stuff inside your home directory, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, another, uh, the problem of this approach is that you have to uh, copy services if uh, there are a system service and uh, a home uh, service, you can't reuse them. You have to copy it and uh, or re-implement re it. Uh, maybe, maybe there are some way to integrate somehow uh, those services. For example, you have one definition of service that can be reused between your operating system or your home configuration. And in case if it used in home configuration, it will extend one service. Uh, in case it used in your system configuration, it will extend another service. Uh, and maybe, maybe uh, such a hybrid approach uh, will remove this duplication of uh, home configuration services or and uh, system uh, services. But maybe uh, it will be hard to implement and it will add some uh, other mess and um, it's better to stick to the first approach uh, where you have two separate uh, kind of services, one for system, one for home configuration. But uh, it's interesting idea uh, where you can remove the problem of the first approach, but maybe introduce some other problems. 
And the last approach uh, related to your user configuration is just launching another operating system inside your already existing operating system. For example, inside container, you can run another Shepherd, which will run all the services inside this con container. Uh, and you will have um, only system services and those uh, system services uh, just will be launched in inside a container container for your uh, and will be used only for, for your user, uh, which is pretty extreme approach. Uh, but another interesting option. Okay, I think that's it for today. Uh, I glad you joined and hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.